Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So, as promised, I'll be going live with a lovely ex-police officer from the States, from America. Her name's Autumn Clifford, and she'll be joining any minute now. Here she is. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good stuff, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. So, um, thank you as well for your time. I really appreciate your time today in uh, sharing all your kind of um, journey from going cop to entrepreneur. Of course, I love hanging out with cops and I love talking business, two of my favorite things. <laughs> no, good stuff, thank you. Um, so, I mean, people will probably be joining and exiting the live, so we'll leave it on for those who want to watch and, um, and yeah. So, I think first of all, the first question is, where about you from? What what state in particular? And, um, you know, how did you get into the police service? Yeah, so um, I'm from Maine. So I live up right underneath Canada on the East Coast, right above New York City. Um, and so I got into the police force when I was 20 years old. Um, I had an uncle who was a police chief. And um, I've been in the martial arts since I've been five years old. And so what happened was... Like my instructor, he was a police officer. And so I just had these two people who I really like respected and loved and they were cops. And so I was like, I'm going to go be a cop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. And, and is there any kind of reason why you want to become a cop? Was it, was it like cool or is there anything that stood out to you? Yeah, so I love being a role model. So I've been, so I was um, in the martial arts since I've been five years old. I achieved two black belts, which was really cool while I was in there. And um, and I was an instructor as well. And so what I loved was being a role model and being somebody that people could lean on and mm -hmm. like look up to. And so, um, you know, being a police officer, that's just what I felt, right. Is like people typically, you know, look to them to be perfect or, you know what I mean? Like a role model yeah. or whatever you want to say. So well, yeah, that's why. Okay. Also, and, and in the States, I know, you know, we've spoke previously and the UK police service isn't great at the minute. What are the kind of three core problems that you have in the States? Yeah, so probably a little similar to you guys as well. So in my opinion, I would say lack of respect is huge right now. Um, you know, we've, we've undergone a lot in our country as far as, you know, um, the citizens against the police um, and the administration not backing police officers, um, you know, in as far as like smaller administrations, right? Like our own admins to, to big because of like political um, influences as well, you know? And so what has happened is there really is um, a lack of respect. I know that in the US um, in the last, what, six, was it six or seven days? We've lost like six police officers that have been shot wow. in the what? line of duty. Yeah. The last yeah. six or seven days from that, wow. It's been crazy. It's been unbelievably crazy. And, um, you know, and so I, it was actually really interesting, Alex, is I, I was just, I was listening to um, one of the, one of the widows, um, her like speech when she was at the funeral. She, that's exactly what she was saying. She was like, we need to bring back a time where, you know, we actually respect authority because mm -hmm. right now, we, you know, we're just not, no one's, no one's respecting authority and this shit's happening. So, um, so I'd say a lack of respect is, um, you know, huge right now. I think another problem um, is the lack of support, right? So that kind of really blends into that. But like when I was touching upon the, like the police administrations, I don't know if it, is it like that over there? Like, um, and yeah, it, it's a lot of it's a political influence, but what's happening is shit rolls downhill, right? And so you have guys working the road and afraid to take action, afraid to do anything because we don't know what the hell is going to happen. Like, are we going to get time off? Are we going to get in trouble? Are we going to get sued? Like, even, you know, crazy things are happening. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, the lack of support is killing us. Is it like that over there? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, it's so, so similar, actually. There are a lot of officers, you know, um, they, they've got it from both sides. So from the public, they're getting shit, but also... On the flip side, actually, the organization doesn't actually support them the way they should. Yeah. So, hands down, that's the exact same thing over here. It, it almost feels like you know, like you're suffocating. Like when I was on the job, it literally felt like I couldn't breathe because it was 
It was literally like anything I did on the road, like I was scared and I was like, shit, not scared of like the job, just scared of like, okay, I just made a decision. I just had to go hands on with somebody and because they were resisting arrest and like, okay, now what am I going to have to deal with? Right. Or, you know, something, just anything like that. And it was just, it was really hard, you know? Um, and then I think that the third thing that's what's going on, which is, which is really why I'm doing what I'm doing is um, the lack of morale. Like, I really believe in the brotherhood. Like that's this huge for me, brother, sisterhood. Like I really believe in that. Um, I was taught by two old school cops. Uh, they are the ones who trained me right when I got in and they, and they like beat it in my head. They were like, listen, nobody's got your back except the guys that you work with. Like you need to know that and you need, you know, and, and so I'm like, okay, okay, right. And, um, and I just see because of the lack of the respect and like the lack of the support, I just really see a lot of, you know, the lack of morale, right? Like guys are going to work right now. Like when I was going to work and it was like, fuck, like we all are here, great. You know, it wasn't like, yeah, well, like we're gonna go out and stop some cars and we're gonna do police work. Like, that's not what it was. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's know? a lack of passion in, in some respects then. Yeah, yeah, wow. absolutely. Okay. And, and how, how did you come about leaving the, the job? Yeah, so obviously all of those, everything we just chatted about was really big uh, influences for me. Um, <clears throat> and I, just like I said, I just really felt like I was suffocating. Like I'm a, I'm, I don't like to be told what to do. A lot of cops are like that. So if any of you guys are watching, you're probably a little bit like me. We're all really type A personalities, right? So <laughs> we don't like to have anybody put like our thumb on us. And <laughs> I, I really felt like that was what was going on as well as everything I just told you about lack of support, lack of respect, lack of morale. I'm like, holy shit, this is so, it's such a negative, toxic environment. And for me, I got into it, right? So I got into it to be a role model. I got into it to impact people and to help people change their lives. And so when I wasn't, when I haven't like, really been able to do that because of all these reasons, right? I said, okay, I'm gonna go find my own way. I'm gonna go find a way for me to impact people, to be a leader in society as well, right? But maybe if I have to do it a different way, so be it, I'm gonna go do it a different way because I can't, I can't wake up every day and be scared out of my mind that I messed up or something bad was going to happen as far as my admin was going to like jump down my throat and I was going to get fired and all this shit. Right. Like we, you can't, you can't worry about that. And, um, I was like, Oh, I was just, I was stressing out all the time over it. And so I was like, you know, screw this. And, um, I, I, like I told you, we, I dive, I dove right into MLM because, when you're a police officer, right? And <laughs> that's all anybody ever tells you is you're just a cop. You can't do anything. You're just a cop. What do you know? Or you tell yourself, I'm just a cop. Like, what the hell am I going to do in business? Right? And so I was like, all right, I'll just go into MLM. Like, I go into Beachbody and I will teach people how to sell, like, or I will, like, sell some product, right? Because in my opinion, like, in my mind at that time, I was like, well, I don't have any real skills. So I'll just, go just sell a product. Like it was, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah, really, yeah, yeah. It's a really bad mindset, to be honest. And like anybody watching, like if you have that mindset, I want to virtually kick your ass because I don't <laughs> want you to have that mindset because you yeah. you have so much to offer, you know. And um, but I didn't. I was afraid. And so for nine months, that's exactly what I did. Is I just did Beachbody, and it was, it was not what I loved. I hated it, and um, I did well, but I didn't love it. And so that's when I. After that is really when I broke through and I was like, all right, like I'm going to do what I want now. And I've been doing it for two years and it's been really exciting. So awesome. And you, and you, you left ML, MLM for a while, didn't you? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm out. I don't, I mean, I don't do it anymore. I, I did it, like I said, I did it from March and I did it really passionately from March to March, I think 2015 or 2014. I, I can't remember the year, but um, I did it from March to August and like killed it. Like I was making good money while I was a cop. So mm -hmm. like I was, I was busy, <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, yeah, so I was doing that and I was building an online presence, really learning the online world through MLM, but I didn't have a clue what the heck, you know, I was like, what am I doing? I'm, but it worked. The power of the selfie worked, man. It just <laughs> <Yeah. did. laughs> <laughs> and, and what what do you think was your biggest frustrations with MLM? Because a lot of you know, in my in my kind of experience, my outlook on this is that, you know, actually MLM aren't 
actually entrepreneurs. You know, they don't own the products, they don't own the intellectual property, and they like to call themselves entrepreneurs. So, what was your biggest frustration with you know the MLM side of things? Yeah, so that right. So I just got done telling you a few minutes ago, like I hated people telling me what to do, right? And I didn't become, I didn't want to become self-employed to fucking have to be in like these regulations and do what these people told me to do and not say that stuff and say the stuff and do what everybody else was doing. Like I, I will, I'll be honest, I'll be very honest with you. Like I didn't, I didn't become an online entrepreneur to blend in. I just didn't. Like I, <clears throat> I don't blend in, and I love that. <laughs> Whether you like me or you hate me, that's fine but I'm not going to blend in. And so as an MLM, I just felt like, you know, I got, you know, just too much control. Like I, and you're right. Like I wasn't really an entrepreneur, but again, yet again, when we like touch upon that mindset, right. I, in my head, I was like, well, I'm just a cop, right? Like, what am I going to go do? And so it was kind of like one of those things. It was just easy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I completely understand. So what do you currently do in business then? What, what is it you do right now? Yeah, so <clears throat> what I focus on, I focus uh, on sheepdogs. And I'm going to tell you what that is before I go any further. And I have a link um, for everybody. I'm going to post when um, we get done this so everybody can read about it. So they're not like, who is this crazy girl talking about sheepdog, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, a sheepdog in, in our country. So in America, like when you go through the military, you go through the police academy, you get trained um, um, and you get told and talked to about this book. Um, it's called On Combat, and it's by Lieutenant, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, David Grossman. And, um, <clears throat> and he talks about this concept of sheepdogs. And so what that is, just really quickly for all of you, is, is there are um, three kinds of people in society. So we have the sheep, who are just normal, everyday, in their own world people. Like, the, the, those are probably your mom and your dad, or your mom and your aunt, your grandma. Like, they're they, they don't think everybody's out to get them. Like they're not constantly aware of their surroundings. They're just in, they're just living day to day, right? Yeah. Those are the sheep. That's, that, that is who we as like sheep dogs, we protect, right? And we, and we protect them from the wolf. So the wolf are, uh, you know, the criminals that we put away, you know, the people that are really trying to do harm to society, you know, terrorists, etc. And so the sheepdog, what we do naturally, because if you're a cop, then you're naturally a sheepdog, you protect, right? You serve and you protect and you're always aware. And so um, for me, it, you don't have to be a cop. You don't have to be a first responder and you don't have to be in the military to be a sheepdog. Like you could even be just in the military, I mean, in the martial arts. So you can just be somebody who's like, I stand up for what's right and I'm going to do the right thing. And so when I talk about sheepdogs, it kind of encompasses all of that because I'm really all about the people who, who want to stand up and be a leader and who want to stand out and who want to pr like protect people from even just frauds, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could go on this whole rant, Alex, about how I think sheepdogs, okay, so that's us, everybody watching, should be taking over business because then, yeah. then we would actually have integrity back in fucking business. And yeah. you know what I mean? And then like, business would be whole again, in my opinion, because there's so yeah. much, as you know, online, there's just so much, you know, you know, not, yeah. no press, no integrity. Yeah. People are just taking pictures with like hundreds of dollars of bills and they're like, oh, I made it. And it's <laughs> fake. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's my rant. Sorry, everyone, but you had to hear that so that you can now understand. <laughs> so what I do is I work with sheep dogs, right? So I focus on them. I focus on teaching them literally what I've done as far as become, you know, stand out as a leader online and um, build a social media presence that's impactful and um, that's going to change lives, you know. So you can be in business. You might not be in business. Um, I really focus on you can do it without spending all day because that's the number one thing, right, as cops. Who has time for that? Like, who has time, right? When you're in the job, you're like, I don't have time for this shit. But you do, right? <laughs> Yeah, you do. And, um, and you just have to figure out how to leverage it. Once you figure out how to leverage your time, you've got time. I mean, you can literally build a very impactful social media presence in as little as 30 minutes a day. When you first wake up, you've got 10 minutes, you know, don't hide under the covers. So nobody knows that you're awake. If you know, you're a family, family <laughs> yeah. person, right? Yeah. Get online, do an impactful post, comment, share, right? And then you can do the same thing at lunch and the same thing before you go to bed. And honestly, 
that's really going to help you get going. Awesome. And I completely agree with that. A lot of people, you know, we always put these excuses in our mindset and saying we mm -hmm. haven't got the time to do something, but we do. It's, a, it's you know, it's a matter of priority, uh, priorities, I think. Um, and, you know, if people do want that change, they're going to have to start using the time a bit more correctly. So with regards to your income from the job, what was you earning in the job? Yeah, so <clears throat> I earned, it, it really would depend. So base pay over here, so this is American. So base pay, I think I was at like 30,000, 40,000 base pay. That didn't include overtime. So by the time I was done working overtime, I was upwards of 50, 60,000 a year. Um, you know, my, I'm marrying, my fiance is a state trooper. So, you know, we met in the police academy, which is a really fun story. But the thing is, is like, we never fucking saw each other because he also has a, a police canine, which is, um, I don't know what it's like over there, but he, our, our dog, he lives with us. The canine lives with us. And so yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of training, a lot of extra time. Um, Adam gets called out all the time. He's gone all the time. Even when he has days off, they're never really his days off unless we're at a state <laughs> when they can't call him. And yeah. so he, you know, he would work a ton. I'd work a ton. So I got a lot of good overtime. But what I've been able to do, and I'm really excited about this, I'm very humbled. And I can tell you that, it, it, you know, it has been a lot of work on my end. But for the last two years, I've been able to replace that full time income with my own with my business income. Yeah. Um, and so that has been like, for me, that's been like the biggest eye opener. And I'm like, Oh, my gosh, like, I can actually do this. <laughs> you know, yeah. holy shit. And like, <laughs> with, like, from our families as well, because, you know, especially everyone listening, like, you know, in my opinion, like, you're really, if you're starting a business, like you're, you're really like on the tip of this like new thing, like this new age thing where I really believe in the next five to 10 years, you're really going to see almost everything become virtual. You know, everything that can become virtual will. So if you're jumping on now, like you're really ahead of it and don't worry about people judging you right now, because I'm going to tell you, I got judged so bad by the people that I worked with, by all the cops and other agencies who were like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And then to be able to sit back and be like, you guys, like, I'm fucking making money. Like, I'm making more money than you are. You're working your ass off, and I'm sitting in my office, and I'm making more money than you. Like, what the hell? And, um, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not all about that either, Alex. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be honest for everybody. Like, I, I, I want to I wanna tell you that because I want to qualify myself so you guys know that I know what I'm talking about. But at the exact same time, like, I really care much more about the impact that I'm making and I'm just, I feel really blessed to be able to have replaced my income so that I can continue to do this, if that makes sense. 100%. And I think, you know, a lot of people, when they see, you know, someone who earns a lot of money, they automatically think they got those things by some luck or stuff. But a lot of entrepreneurs always help people. So whether it's Tony Robbins or Richard Branson, mm -hmm. they give a service to the world or a market. And with that, they get paid. So, you know, is quite rightly so. You know, you've got to, you get paid for the value you give to the world. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with enjoying money. I think, I think more people need to become more money conscious, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so with regards to your time now as a business owner, what is your time like now compared to when you did the job? Do you have more of it or do you have less of it? Oh, more of it. I, I mean, I have a ton more time, but I'm going to tell you something and be straight with every single one of you listening. It's because but I did not in, in the beginning because I didn't know, like I didn't, and I became, I was so obsessed with my, with my baby, right? Like my business is like my baby. And I, yeah. and when you, and you're passionate about it and you love it, like you just want to do it all the time. Okay. There's a very big difference from that be, than being forced to overtime and being forced over and, you know, held late, ordered in early. Like there's a very big difference than, than that. Okay. And, yeah. You know, I know you know that. And so I've learned how to leverage my time. Okay. And so, like I said, you can be very impactful with literally just 30 minutes a day. No problem. Yeah. You really, you really can. If you leverage your time wisely, like you can do that. I have to tell you guys that I was on the road for nine, nine or 10 months working as an online entrepreneur, uh, you know, um, an MLM. Yeah. And, um, and then as I did my switch over from MLM to <clears throat> doing what I'm doing now, which is coaching, um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I worked my ass off. Like I was, 
you know, any minute I had while I was on duty and I had a break and like it wasn't against the, the rules, I was on my phone and I was doing things that were impactful and like helpful. And then on my days off to, to build that momentum. Um, but I can tell you that right now I get to make my own schedule, which is amazing because, <laughs> you know, my fiance, he works like crazy hours because he's a cop, right? And so I just, I just mimic his schedule and it, it works, you know, when, when I want to go places, I go and I take my phone. So, cause I take my clients um, right over the phone so I can be anywhere and I'm chatting with them. It's no problem. Like I don't have to be in my office. Does that make sense? Yeah, Which, no, it makes sense. Yeah. So it's huge. It, I mean, it's, I'll tell you, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome. So touch on your coaching. What kind of coaching do you do and how are you, you know, making an impact in people's lives? Yeah. So, so basically like, I don't, I don't really, I hate labels. Like I'm going to be straight with you. I hate labels. So like I, I coach people. I don't know. I mean, I'm somewhere between like a business coach and like a mindset coach. Like I'm somewhere in there. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm somewhere in there. Basically, like I said, I got, I really, I really like to focus on digging the, um, the goods out of people. Like I really want them to see that they're fucking amazing, that they have, you know, they have, you know, um, a unique set of skills, right. That, that they don't even know that they have. Right. I mean, I, you, if you, if you guys follow me on Instagram at all, and I know you do, Alex, like I make rants all the time and it, and it goes just <laughs> like this. You're a sheepdog, dude. Like you have more experience in life in fucking life than so many people like that I've ever met in my life who are doing business and they're making fucking seven figures and you've got 10 times more of experience and don't think for one second that can't be you, right? Yeah. You just have, you know, and, and so I focus on that and I, and I focus on teaching people how to put themselves out online, get visible and really step into that be, for them to become the leader that they are. A lot of times sheepdogs are leaders and you know, you're a leader in your community. You might be a leader in your agency. And, um, but it's not translating online. Like you're like this, like really like quiet person online. And yeah. um, so like my forte is to be able to trans transfer that. So um, you can even call it branding, right? Okay. Awesome. Okay. So maybe create an online social presence, right? Yep. Okay. Awesome. So um, just going back to the job again, you know, cause I want to kind of the differences between the, the U S and here in England. Um, what were the biggest, you know, what was your your personal biggest stress in the job? Being told what to do. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh yeah, like I fucking I didn't. I mean, not the laws and not the like regulations, right? And um, and I follow SOPs, which are standard operating procedures, and maybe you guys use that acronym yeah. as well. But, um, you know, no, no problem there. It was it was leadership. It was literally leadership. Like we have good leaders and bad leaders, and I fucking couldn't stand the bad leaders because you, you know, it just kills you. Right. I mean, yeah. you guys know that if you've been in like any, even not even law enforcement, right. Just any line of work when you have a bad leader and you're working directly under a bad leader, like it makes you, it makes you miserable. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just hated working for incompetent people. Like, you know, it, and it, it's kind of a joke. It's really not a joke, but it, it's very true. It's like, I was the second highest, I was young, okay? So I was like 22, 20 when I first started, 21, 22. I was the second highest educated person in my agency. Wow. I mean, and I'm not the experience doesn't trump education. Don't get me wrong, you guys. Like, uh, don't even get me on that rant on like what I think about college and all this shit. But I'm going to tell you what I did learn in college. I learned a ton about leadership. I did. And so I'm like, being led by these people who were just terrible you know they don't do what i do do what i say and, and just you know micromanage and for me that was very difficult and so yeah. i get to be my own um incompetence is rewarded here lee it's the same thing over here don't even worry about it brother it's the same fucking shit <laughs> over here, <laughs> which is why i got out <laughs> <laughs> lee's one of my old um sergeants um so then he, he completely understands like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. same thing yeah. over here. Yeah. Awesome. So how did you plan for business? You know, you've, you're making the transition to go from police officer to entrepreneur. 
how did you, you know, what initiative did you take in the planning process of building your business? Yeah, so um, the truth would be there was no planning in the beginning. I just kind of, and I, this was before I transitioned. So I'm not talking about don't not have a fucking plan and just quit. Like I do, I do really do not do that. I don't recommend that. But <laughs> Um, like when I first, like when I got done MLM, but I was still on the job, um, for, I was on the job for about six months before I like left. Um, I hired a coach, I hired someone and I, I, I'll be honest that honestly having direction and having that mentor and having somebody who's done it or who gets you is, is, and can give you strategy and can just honestly can just fucking be there for you is the biggest thing. Um, hands down, that is what has propelled me um okay. and so i like to provide that as well and but <clears throat> you know um i think that there's something to be said alex for somebody and this is why and this is why like i like you and me i'm biased but <laughs> there's there's something to be said for working with somebody who actually gets what you did though as a as a cop right as a sheepdog because i was working with people who were trying to take the cop right out of me and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute because the I have this unique set of skills. Don't take it out of me. And they were. And like I won't lie, you guys. Like I got beat down for a while, and I got my head all messed up because they were like, "Oh, you're too masculine. Oh, you swear. Oh, you know, you need to really tone that down. Nobody cares that you were a cop." And for a while, I really toned that down. And wow. yeah. And so now that you see me, like, look. I mean, this is. I hang out with this thin blue line. Like, you know, I'm totally. I'm totally all cop you guys listen to me swear and that's just who i am though right like you get on yeah. the phone with me and you know yeah, yeah. i'm the same you girl that you're listening to right now which is very key by the way but you know um, a lot of these fucking coaches would try to pull that shit out of me and so i'm like i said i'm quite biased about alex and i because we know like we're not yeah. trying to pull that out of you in fact yeah. i'm trying to like inject that more into you online so you can so you can stand out and you can and you can be who you are and make money. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I love it. And, and you're completely right. I, you know, I've seen your Instagram posts and you're exactly the same as you are now on your Instagram post. So and I think, you know, that adds a layer of authenticity. And once you start having mm -hmm. authenticity, you know, you get more trust, you get more of that bonds, that rapport. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's quite bad for people to try and pull the cop out of you when essentially that's, you know, that's what makes you you. No shit. No shit. <laughs> so with the, with your branding in business, you know, how important do you think branding is for business and why do you think it's important? Yeah. So I think I'll be honest, like I think branding is absolutely everything. <laughs> and <laughs> but but don't get it twisted. And, and this is what I tell everyone. Like I'm not talking about your website. I'm really not. I'm not really talking about that shit. I'm talking about who you are and keeping that consistent because and, and you just hit the nail right on the head about being authentic, right? So when when I, it's not that I was never authentic, like, right? I just, I had to tone some shit back. And I felt like when I was toning shit back, I wasn't on brand, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. what would happen is, like, I wouldn't swear or I would be doing this thing. And you get on the phone with me. Not that I'd be completely different, but you, you could be taken back just a little bit, right? And you'd be like, holy shit, she's like, she doesn't give a shit. <laughs> like, who, who is this girl, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, you don't want that, okay? Like, take it from me. Don't do what I do. You don't want that. What you want is when you're writing your posts and you're making your copy, you need to act like you're having a conversation with your friend, okay? Okay. And so um, I'm just going to plug my phone in. Okay. Um, you want to make sure, you want to act like you're having a conversation, like, real life, right? And um, you know, your videos, you don't need to get perfect. Don't dress up. Your videos don't need to be perfect. My videos are not perfect, but I'm going to tell you something. That's where I make all my money. That's where people get to know me. They like me. They trust me. And on video, I've, I'll be honest, you guys, like that's where I have sold thousands of dollars just mm -hmm. off video. They don't even need to talk with me. They, like yeah. they're listening to me just like this, because then when they go and they check on my Instagram and they check my Facebook, they're like, Oh, she's the same. And that, brand is that is key right showing people what you stand for letting them know how you're going to help them and then just being you through that in my opinion that's key i love that no, no and do you know what i completely agree um it's, it's more more so of like a personal brand right 
personal brand. So you put yourself out there. And I, I think if you start to act different to your target market or your audience, people will, will know, you know, you are looking fake. And the more consistent you are in actually just being you, you know, that, that is a win-win. One of my, uh, one of the mentors, his name's Tim Han, he said to me once, um, the best thing about being yourself is that when you are yourself, you attract those who love you and you repel those who hate you. So really, yeah. you know, it's so a win-win, win, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So what platform works for you best with regards to social media? Yeah, so I love Instagram and I'll tell you why. So I don't, I, I see that you've grown a Facebook group. Like I'm going to be, I'm going to be transitioning some of my people from Instagram to Facebook because I love the group. Um, I started out on Facebook as groups. Like I grew my group. I had like a 1500 person group and then I got pissed off and shut it. I just shut it all down. I was like, no, cause they weren't my people. Yeah, <laughs> they were yeah. not my people. They, they were not pro cop. They were like spiritual liberals that just were driving me nuts. Right. And so, um, I just, I'm like, okay, like, out, out, shut it down. And so then I moved over to Instagram. And the thing about Instagram, and I don't know what you guys in the UK, but I know in America, like, Facebook can be so clogged with like, um, anti police, that all the cops that I know personally, have like deactivated the Facebook, or they, they don't spend any time on Facebook, they spend all their mm -hmm. time on Instagram, because they can see what, like, it's very targeted. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they can keep their account like, very um um lockdown like you they can use these names that you would have no idea who they are and and so um i found for me my people are really hanging out on instagram so i love instagram i do have a facebook page i do have like my facebook um i was really big on snapchat did you do snapchat uh, so yeah so I, I tried it but i didn't like it i, I prefer instagram um but i know yeah. snapchat was huge but i know instagram's upped its game a little bit Yes. Yeah. So exactly. And that's what I was going to say. So I had about like a hundred people on Snapchat, which was, which was pretty, that was pretty significant. But when I transitioned over to Instagram, they have the stories. Like I'm all about the stories. Cause I, I love to show people like behind the scenes. Like I want to show you real life shit because when I was getting started, nobody was doing that. It was all, and it still is like, you're perfect posed and, and here's my granite countertops in my beautiful home and it's like they were at their fucking like great aunts you know what i mean it wasn't <laughs> yeah. theirs and, and shit like that um so i just like i just like to show people that right like i, I like 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 um so I, I was telling you earlier but i'll tell everybody so i was like building my funnel and i literally spent like a week in this chair building this fucking funnel and like on my instagram you would see, like, I'd have a glass of wine and my computer, my desk was a mess. And I'd be like, guys, this is, this is real life. Like, this is not, this is not fake bullshit. Like, this is what it's like to be an entrepreneur, right? Who's at home and who's hustling. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And like Lee said, in, Instagram did introduce stories to get people away from Snapchat. It works because the people that see my Snapchat stories, I mean, I'm killing it on the amount of people that are seeing that versus Snapchat. So I just don't even give a shit about Snapchat anymore. Wow. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, okay. So tell me a bit. So you've mentioned about funnels recently, and I know this is kind of your speciality, actually. So do you want to talk about a bit how you market to your customers and how you generate leads? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is one of my favorite things, funnels, but it's, it's, I don't know if anybody, if anybody who's watching this live or in the replay, just let me know if you've ever heard of a funnel, because <laughs> I need to know. It's like huge. You need to have, so here's the thing is that there are several different kinds of funnels and I, I promise you every business that's actually making money has a funnel it just depends on what their funnel is a funnel is just a like a marketing process that's all that it is it's how you're getting your leads and it's how you're getting in front of them and then it's how they're paying you and you, like what service you're offering and how they're like paying you that's really what a funnel is but what I've been doing for me is to leverage that is I've created um, lower price, um, kick ass product, like a fucking amazing product, but at a lower cost, because what I was finding was, you know, I, cause like, you know, working with me one-on-one, -on -one, obviously you're going to have the most impact. Like I've, you know, you had a one-on-one -on -one coach, you have your clients like me. I, I mean, that's where I see the most dramatic change, but not everybody has that amount of money, you know, mm -hmm. up front. And 
not everybody trusts you yet. Like they need to learn to trust you. And so I have like a $27 product after they come and they, and they come on my page and they, and they watch like a, like they have two free trainings. They get to listen to or watch whatever they want to do, get to know me. If they like what I'm saying, they go down and they're going to, they're going to buy a $27 product. That's going to change their life. Like if they implement, it will change their life. And then what happens from there, you guys, is that we, we, we continue this relationship. So um, either through email or social media and they get to know me. And so the next time I'm like, like you, Hey, I'm having a live event. Hey, I've got this thing. Hey, um, I have one-on-one, -on -one. I have an opening for one-on-one. -on -one. Then people are like, um, get me in. I want to do that. And, and when you have a funnel that is evergreen, meaning like you use ads or however you promote and then you're, you have more time. Like that's how you can leverage and that's how you can scale your company. Um, because what a lot of coaches are teaching you, which is okay in the beginning and I've did it in the beginning, but it doesn't, it doesn't allow for you to scale, um, is for you to just be here and be like, Hey guys, I have this offer and like be every single day live. Like I have this offer, I have this offer, I have this offer. What, why would you do that when you can make it evergreen and hands off? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, completely agree. So what, what's the, tw so the $27 product? What, what is that? Give us some insight to that. Yeah, okay. So, um, and I just created, um, um, it's like fresh in my head. So, but I'm still like burnt out from it, you guys. Like you just don't understand. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I need you to understand how like, because you, anyways, it was, it was really intense. But so for like my $27 product that I have. So you come onto my page and you're going to listen to me. You're going to listen to me tell you that like a training on, you don't have to have a business. Okay. Cause that's a number. That's a fear that all my cops have. Like all my sheepdogs have is like, well, I don't have a business. So you can't help me. And then my next training is time out. Guess how I can help you. Even if you don't have a business and you just want to grow a presence online. And then I teach them what you can do by being an influencer online. So even if you don't have a business, you guys, but you just want to build something right now, start becoming a targeted influencer online because you can make money and you can build relationships. And then when you decide that you want to launch this thing, drop this thing, guess what? You've got a distribution channel. You've got people who know, like, and trust you and you can make money. Right? So, so you have that free training, no opt-in necessary. You just go watch it. Then if you like that and you're like, okay, how do I do that? Like I'm ready to go and I'm hungry. So for $27, what I've created for sheepdogs um, is it's a, it's a hashtag guide. So I compiled 75 hashtags for, uh, for Instagram for like specifically sheepdogs, which wow. I wish somebody would have done for me when I first started um, because that took me fucking a year and so many hours, like thousands of hours to find. But wow. I've got 75 hashtags targeted for sheepdogs. I have a guide on how to use it. It's an audio course and a PDF. And then I was like, well, what, how, okay, so they have these hashtags, but like, how are they going to get seen? So then I went and I created this influencers guide. So I've got top 20 influencer profiles com um, all compiled that you get to reach out to. They know you're coming because if you tell them that I sent you, they know you're coming. Some are free. Like there are some really big fucking pages that you can actually get shouted out on for free because you're a sheepdog. Um, yeah. And some are paid, but the paid ones aren't that expensive. You guys, like, you just throw 10 bucks at them and like you're getting new followers. You're getting new leads. It's, it's very reasonable. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And so I put that together. Um, that's a book and then a, an audio course on like what to do and how to do it. And then, um, as a fast action bonus right now, um, b until I sell it, I just launched this this morning. Okay, you guys. But, so, <laughs> but, um, what, like, and then I put together like an audit. So it's social media, do it yourself, 20 page. It's a 22 page, um, eight step audit. So go through your social media and be like, am I doing this right? Am I not doing this right? What the hell? You know, why aren't people talking to me and posting yep. and nobody gives a shit. So <laughs> I, I put that together for $27. And, and the reason why, because like at first people are like, Autumn, that's a lot to put together for $27. Like, are you kidding with me right now? Because, the, and you know that Alex, I mean, the value on something like that's quite a bit. But here's the thing, you guys, is like when you are hanging out with people you love, you don't care. You're like, look, 
you probably you don't have a lot of money to throw with this here just let me help you <laughs> and that's yeah so that's what i did yeah no no i completely agree so we so we run a one day event and that's 97 pound which you know this nothing you don't we don't make anything on that and the reason for that is because we want to give police officers this you know there's a different life if you're so you know unhappy in the job if you're unhappy if you're you know getting frustrated with the processes and you're completely right when you start wanting to you know i've got a quote it's choose your clients as you would your friends yeah and by that you actually get a bit of more you know uh not protective but actually you want to give them more value so that yeah. they can raise up a little bit more. So, so yeah, your, your sales process, Autumn, do you actually, you know, do you pick up the phone at all or anything like that? Or is it, is it basically online? No, no. So, I mean, so as you keep going through the funnel, there's a couple of different things. So I offer an email coaching. Um, I'll go over your audit for you. So it's customized. So I haven't gotten on the phone with them until at that point. The next step is they work with me one on one in a, like a 60 to 90 minute intensive mm -hmm. that at that point we're getting on the phone. Um, and then from there, um, if they're a good fit, if I feel like they're a good fit for me, if I feel like I can help them and I feel like they really need it, then I'll offer them. I'm on the phone with them and that's when I'll offer. I'll be like, Hey, I have this six week package or whatever works for them. Like I'm really not of the belief that for coaching anyways, like you have to have like these set in stone things. I really truly believe in customization because that's what's gonna work, right? Like if you, if I really think that you need only six weeks, I'm not gonna try to go sell you on a three month package. It's just not who I am, yeah. that's integrity, but not every coach is like that, I promise you, because I've been sold on shit and I was done halfway through and I had paid like $10,000 for this coach. And yeah, it was crazy shit, just crazy shit. Wow. And um, and like halfway through the, the coaching, I, I didn't need it anymore. It was a waste of time, mm. you know, but she was just like, well, that's all I have. And I was blinded by the light. Is like what I'd like yeah. to call it. And I was wow. like, okay, you know? So yeah, so that's when I get on the phone. So after, after somebody wants to, you know, when they want to work with me, like an intensive, like, right. Like we'll get on the phone, even if they want to just chat for a few minutes, like I'll do like what you, what like people will call a discovery call. I'm not sure what you call yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'll hop on the phone with someone for 10 to 15 minutes, but you got to be careful at that point too, because some people think that that's like a coaching call. Yeah. You, do you know what I'm saying? Protect so, the time, right? Yeah. So you got to, yeah. Okay. Awesome. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people who aren't in business think you need money to start a business. Like you need this capital intensive kind of chunk of money what advice would you give to any of the police officers in the group to get over that mindset? Yeah, start building a social media presence. Okay. And you don't like, so here's the thing about business, right? Especially online, all you need is a distribution channel. And it's kind of like, are you guys familiar with Oprah over there? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, yeah. okay. so I think it everyone is, but and just, so you gotta think about Oprah, okay? Oprah created her own distribution channel. Back when she started, there was no internet. So what did she do? She went and became, like, she started her TV show, okay? And right out the gate, she wasn't anything great. Like, don't forget that. Like, she worked years and years and years to become who she is, okay? Yeah. But what she did create is she created an audience that loved her, and she created a, a distribution channel. So anytime she wanted to sell something or anybody wanted to sell something, right? They mm -hmm. would pay her probably to come on her show or um, she would get a percentage of whatever she was about to sell. Her distribution channel was her audience, right? And so like um, my mentor, Russell Brunson, like he was talking about, I'll quote him directly. He's, he said that there are actually been companies that would go, fuck, they'd have to shut, they would shut down because they would go on Oprah and they would say like, hey, we have this product, like we're gonna pretend it's this chapstick. And Oprah would literally go, oh my God, I love this chapstick, you guys, you gotta try it. The company would sell out instantly. And the reason why was because she was an influencer and she had a distribution channel, okay? And so here's the great thing about online. You can create that for free. Get on Instagram, get on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, create a blog, start, you know, a podcast, start a video blog on YouTube, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Just start 
helping people and you can do it for free now and you and, and you'll start you know and then like, if you're if you're working working the job and you can just put a little bit of money aside and just put a little money aside and put a little money aside you know um good because at, at some point when you're ready to get very serious about it i do think you're gonna need some guidance i'll be honest mm. um because i know that i did because when i tried to do it by myself i was broke um <laughs> and yeah. nobody was coming to hang out with me Nobody was listening to me because I didn't, I didn't know I didn't have strategy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely agree. So your mindset from back when you was a cop to how you are now, so police officer to entrepreneur, how differently is your thinking? What's changed in your mindset? <clears throat> oh, well, I can tell you that I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of personal development. I, um, you know, you and I've chatted prior about Tony Robbins, like, when I was a cop, the thing about becoming a cop, and, and here's the thing, you guys, um, you know, and I, and I say this for my sheepdogs, right, is we work with the, the really bad 5%, 3 to 5% of society over and over and over again. So what happens? We become jaded. We become negative. We, we don't see that the whole world isn't bad. We don't see, you know, that, um, you know, there are great leaders in the world and that we don't see that we have all these options. Like we don't see that as, as police officers, we get tunnel vision and we, and we just really, you know, cause we wake up and we get in the mundane and we have our routines and, 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 you know, and, and as a cop, like that's, you, be, you become a very negative. You do. Okay. I mean, there's books called like emotional survival and law enforcement. Have you guys, do you guys, have you guys heard of that? Yeah. So, yeah, so there was this book, and it, it's actually, like, required in, like, all academies through America now. Um, it's called Emotional Survival and Law Enforcement. You can get it on Amazon. It's super cheap. I can't think of the author right now. But wow. it's, it basically tells it, – it'll tell you, like, year one to three, here's how you feel. Year five to seven, here's how you feel. Whatever. But it's a really good book. So if you're in – if you're still a police officer, you should probably pick that book up because it'll, <laughs> it'll tell you why you feel the way that you feel. Anyways um, – I think that my mindset has is now more open and I'm more excited and I'm more like there's so much more possible, right? Um, but here's the great thing. Here's the thing I love about cops and I love about sheepdogs. Like we all have this like drive. Like you have a you had a drive to become mm -hmm. a police officer. Well, that same drive is going to benefit you ten times more as an entrepreneur because you get to help yourself now. Like you're not working for somebody who's, who, who um, might be a really bad leader or who might be able to, you know, control everything that you do. You don't have that. What you have is you get to work for yourself. And so get up every day and be driven and, and ready to go. And, and don't lose that, you know, don't, don't lose that edge. Cause that's, what's going to make you, you know, that and your discipline and your integrity, all of that stuff is going to make you an amazing business owner, an amazing leader you know, in, um, in the world and, um, mm. don't, don't lose that. Yeah. No. Awesome. And, and so the next question you've tied it into it already, but what skill sets have helped you personally from being police officer to now an entrepreneur, whether that's resilience or team working, what, what helped you? Yeah. I mean, obviously like being tenacious, right? So as a, as a business owner, you're going to get knocked down. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's easy peasy and you're not going to get knocked down. Like you're totally going to get knocked down. And that's yeah. why you want to have a mentor that like is there for you and, and who knows, who knows what you've been through, right? Like it knows your history and knows that, you know, um, you can do it. Right. So you're going to get knocked down. So being tenacious has really helped me, but, um, I would really say that my people skills, my people skills, like from being a cop, like the, the psychology and, you know, just being able to read people. And, and so that's really helped me with my buyer's psychology. So I really, yeah. I really got into the heads of, okay, well, what do people want? What can I give them? And, and, and what are their problems? Right? Like I need, yeah. to, I need to touch on their problems and like, and so like as a police officer, right? Like we're always looking, we're always looking for the problem. We're problem solvers. We're trained problem solvers. So we're always looking for that problem anyways. It's just, I don't know, like I, I get on a call with somebody and what would take a, some coach, a lot of coaches, hours, it takes me 15 minutes because I'm just looking for the problem, scanning, right? Okay, yeah. there's a problem. Okay, here's the solution. And so for me, my problem solving skills, my people skills have really fucking helped me um, 
you know, my tenacity, my, my discipline, my integrity. Cause you could, I mean, business is just, I don't know. You just need to be full of integrity. That's all I'm going to say yeah. about that. <laughs> no, I completely agree. Um, okay. So since, um, you know, being in business, what would you say was the one challenging time that really like kind of got to you? Um, well, let's see one time. I mean, this, I, I can tell you about, let me tell you about two times. Cause I think everybody needs to hear this. Okay. Um, you're going to have haters. Like when you start putting yourself out there, you're going to have haters. And there was a woman who she actually, she, she, I worked with her like very extensively and, um, for like eight weeks or something. And she was the kind of person who would cancel a lot and she would not show up for her calls and the, but expect me to like jump whenever she came back. Right. And yeah. I, I can't do that. I mean, I run a business. We're not friends. Like I run a business. If you, if you, you know, and, the, and, and, and the, there's boundaries there. And yeah. um, anyway, she ended up like, she ended up like just being awful mean after and like saying like really nasty things just be, I, I, and it had nothing to do with me. Like I realized it after it was everything to do with her. Like her life was a mess, but she just was looking for a scapegoat, you know, mm -hmm. but like when you're, but you take that so personally, especially when you're your own brand, you know, yeah. and you're, you just take it so personally. And so that took me a long time to get over and be like, Oh my gosh. Like, okay. So I'm, I'm really not this shit bag. Like I just kept thinking, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I'm a shit bag. I'm a terrible person. And, um, it really wasn't that. So like, when you have a hater, you just, you just have to know that that's coming. Like it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, like, and the, the second thing really was when, you know, and I touched upon it earlier, but I'm going to say it again, because this is so fucking important. Like, I just can't, I cannot say this enough is, you know, when the, I, I worked with these coaches that really tried to beat out of me who I really was, you know, stop being so masculine, stop being so, you know, don't swear, don't say the F word, but you guys, here's the thing. If I see a company that swears in their, in for me, and when I see that they swear, I'll buy whatever the hell they're, whatever they're selling, I'm buying. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you just said the F word. I love you. <laughs> but that, and, and, and you know what? That has attracted so many people to me that has repelled a ton, but it's attracted the people that love me. And here's the thing I can tell you about that. My people they don't give a shit what I'm selling, they're buying. I have, I've changed my niche several times because of these coaches, okay? These people telling me not to be who I am and I got a little sidetracked, okay? Yeah. And, um, and, but my people come and they hang out with me and they buy from me. I've taught business, I've taught mindset, I've taught spirituality, I've taught virtual self-defense. And guess what? They still hang out with me, like I still have, repeat clients and, and you know why it's because of going back to that branding of I was just who I am right but not to get off track of that's a lesson and I really want everyone to like I want that to sink into your head because you don't let somebody tell you who you are even in this online world just don't let them and and you know there was a, there's a quote that's coming to my head right now and um it's by Rebecca Campbell and she's a, she's an author. I don't know if you guys, she's from Australia, but she's living in the UK. Okay. Um, and she just, um, she says, forge a path, don't follow. And if there's any piece of advice like I can leave you with, it is truly that like, do not follow because if you follow the trends and you follow all these people that make it look good, you're, you're, you're so living out of, you're not like authentic and you're not true to you and you're going to be miserable. And then you're going to go, I fucking need to get back in the job or I need to do something <laughs> different because I hate this online business, you know? Yeah. And yeah. It doesn't have to be like that. Okay. Awesome. I, I love that. Um, and, and what you touched on there, I think ultimately people buy from people yes. and you know, you've done all those kind of niches, but essentially they're buying to you, right? You've got that trust. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And you've already touched on mentors. So this is one of the more questions I wanted to ask you. But how have mentors helped you personally, you know, achieve your level of success? Yeah, so here's the thing. And um, I'm a mentor, in my opinion, and I'm not just saying this. Like, I can, I can literally show you in my business where when I had a mentor, I was this successful. And I can measure my success. And I can show you the amount of money that I've made. So like, when I've had mentors, 
for the most part, I've been really successful. When I didn't have a mentor, um, sometimes I wasn't as successful, okay? Until I got it. Like, I had to learn some shit. Like, I had to get my foundation uh, built. You know, I had to lay that foundation. So, like, once you, you know, once you know your brand and your niche and, um, you know, your marketing strategy and your mindset's on point, once you have that foundation, you can, then it's okay, like, you, you know, you can pick up a mentor as you can afford it or as you see fit. But, like, it, but in the very beginning, it really just kind of depends on how all in you are, right? Yeah. Like, so... I'm a girl who's all in. Like, if I like it, I'm all in. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm Italian as they come. So, like, I <laughs> there's no no gray for me. Black and white, and that's it. Yes or no, I'm in or I'm not. And that's, and, and that's how it is for me. And so, if you're all in, hire that mentor and go for it, right? Like, and, and, and don't think that you can just do it all by yourself. Cops, we tend to be stubborn as fuck, right? Like, <laughs> we do. We are. We are like we we are. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. Probably, I'm the queen of stubborn. But here's the thing. <laughs> just here's the thing. Like you just have to know that you're gonna get there ten times faster if you're listening to somebody who's done it right and somebody who gets you. Like, don't make that mistake of going and hiring. Like, and I'm telling you from experience, okay? Because I've done this. Yeah. I went and worked. I went and worked with. I paid ten thousand dollars for this coach. You know what I didn't know, you guys. Here, let me just tell you what I didn't know. I didn't know her ex-husband was a cop, and she fucking hates cops. I had no <laughs> idea. And here I am trying to build my brand, and she's like, you know, like, why are you bringing, nobody cares that you're a cop. Like, nobody, nobody wants that. And I'm like, but what I didn't know, Alex, was that she fucking hates the cop. And I spent so much money, you know, because who she came across as online was like, so, I thought it was great. And then I found out she hated cops. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's terrible. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> He's crying. Yeah, so don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure whoever you're going to work with is fucking gets you <laughs> and supports you. <laughs> don't do that. That's a good, that's a very good piece of advice. Um, so um, what does entrepreneurship mean to you as a person? Well, it kind of goes back to a couple of things, okay? So it goes back to everything I've been talking about. I love to do what I want to do when I want to do it. That is the ultimate thing for me, freedom. I need freedom. Like, I crave it. Mm -hmm. um, but also leadership, right? So I really am very passionate about being a role model for people and being that person that somebody can lean on. Um, I didn't have that, right? So as I've been... I've had kind of forging my own path. And as I've explained, um, you know, I didn't have that. I didn't have somebody who got me like they didn't understand why, like I have anxiety, like when I go out and like, sometimes like I I'm a wicked big people person and I love like events, but like, you know, multiple thousand per people events, like Tony Robbins events, as much as I love Tony, like, my mentors, I couldn't understand. Like, I have anxiety because I'm, like, ready to fucking, like, I'm ready to, like, whip my firearm out if I have to, right? Like, I'm ready to, like, I'm, like, on edge because as a cop, like, that's, that's the mentality that's, like, in my head, you know? And, and but, you know, when I really didn't want to work with, like, people who didn't like cops and, like, my mentors didn't realize that, right? And so, uh, you know, being being a leader and, and being that person and being able to do what I want to do and be able to show up as who I am authentically. I mean, like, let's be real. The last thing I just want to say is like, I keep driving it in your head. But, um, you know, as a cop, like, you, you don't get to be who you are. Like, let's be real. You, you get to be who society needs you to be. You get to be the person who has got to have, you know, this face of steel with no emotion. And you've got to do you just got to do your job. But that's not real, right? And at, eventually that takes a toll on us emotionally. And Miss Emotional over here, it really did for me. <laughs> and so now I'm like, nope, I'm going to be who I am. And like when I'm, when I'm mad, when something upsets me, like obviously I need to do it in a more of a professional manner, but I'm going to let my people know because it just brings us closer together, right? Like when I, when I wanted, like you saw a story, that, um, just so for everyone listening, there was a story about, um, the suicide rate in America is crazy. I know it's a lot like the UK, but the suicide yeah. rate of police officers are, it's just, 
it's, it's astounding. It's, I mean, we lost like over 150 officers last year to suicide that nobody wants to fucking talk about, but everyone wants to talk about how they're getting ambushed. And it, obviously I respect that, but I mean, we've got a silent killer epidemic going on. And I truly believe it's because they're, as a police officer, we, oh, I get so fired up about this because like, we're not, we need to, we need to serve our brother and our sisters who are, who are serving and protecting our country, right? Like we, we don't have the things in place that need to be there. We don't have the support and these people, they're not feeling like they can be who they are. And, they, and they're feeling like, like, the, um, remember how I told you I felt like I was like suffocating because I just felt like they were just like the grip, they were closing like this grip yeah. on me. And I really feel like that's what's going on with these officers. Right. And so I, I, I on Instagram, like you, I went off on that. I was pissed. Yeah. I'm like, all right, like we need to do something like, holy shit. And like, because I said that you, you should have seen what all of my people there were like, thank you. Like, I love you. This, I, couldn't agree more yeah. and I was like and if I was a cop I wouldn't have been able to do that right like I can't say I can say now what all the cops on duty want to say right like yeah. I can fucking go off and I can be that person for them and I can be a voice for mm -hmm. them that they couldn't they couldn't say when they're on the road but I can I'm like don't worry guys I got you because I know exactly <laughs> what you want to say and I'm gonna fucking say it yeah <laughs> so, no so for me you know, that's huge. That, to me, that that's everything to me. Everything. No, amazing. So you can be yourself, you've got the freedom, you can do what the hell you want now, basically. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so any officer who's, you know, watching this, who's going to watch the re preview, and, they're, and they are really unhappy with their jobs, they, they want to get paid their worth, they want to, you know, start to, you know, maybe start, you know, looking at life in a different way to start to live life on their terms, but they're frightened or, and it's, you know, fear, if business, going in business is a fearful thing to do. What advice would you give to someone who's, you know, maybe depressed, who's got anxiety, who's doesn't want to go into the shifts, who's dealing with that level of stress? Um, yeah. What advice would you give to UK officers who might watch this, who are looking? Well, first of all, I just want to tell you that I was just like you. Like I, like I, I, the person that you just described was me. Like I was having anxiety attacks on the job because I just, I hated so much of the shit right and like i i felt all of that and i um to be really honest with you i can't tell you how many nights i'd be crying in my cruiser i'd park somewhere and i'd be bawling my eyes out no, nobody knew this like this is totally like nobody knew this shit but i just i hated it so bad because i couldn't be who i was i couldn't i couldn't be who i was anymore and i just felt literally like i was suffocating and so i just want to tell that person who might could understand that like I just want to tell you that here's what here's what got me through and you can get through this and, and here's what got me through is I I, um, I focused on personal development like I listened in my cruiser over and over and over again Tony Robbins you know I'd listen to Gary Vaynerchuk you know he was really big Russell Brans uh, Branson is really big over there um, I love Russell Branson um, I'd listen to my mentors Russell Brunson he's the founder of ClickFunnels like I love him but I would listen to people who would inspire me who would motivate me um who would let me know that I was so much better than what my circumstances were right now and that this was just temporary you know and so you know I really fully believe like keeping that shit on auto like just have it with you be listening have like have like that kind of support you know staying in a place like this group where you have support People are doing it. You can do it. And to really reach out because as cops, again, we really just think that, no, I got this. I can handle this. I got this. Like, I got this. I'm tough. I'm tough. Right. And he's like, hey, mm. you are tough. You're, you're tough as fucking nails. Like, don't, don't get it twisted. But sometimes other people can just see what you can't, mm. you know what I'm saying? And so for me, like, that's really important. And, um, that the, like when my, when everything changed for me was when I hired my first mentor, and and it just changed. It, and it, what changed for me was I felt like I had a chance, right? Like I felt like I could. That's what changed for me, Alex. Was I went from I'm fucking I have to spend the next twenty five years like this or the next twenty years like this. Like I can't do this anymore. I'm just a cop, and I and I went from all these negative thoughts to 
no, I think I can might be, I might be able to do this. Like how cool would it be if I did this? And then when you just make that simple switch, everything, everything changes because then you're now you're going on the uphill instead of going on the downhill. Wow. That's amazing. That's the, honestly, that's so inspiring. I know um, that's going to resonate with so many officers in this group. Um, and it's really inspiring to hear that actually, you know, the same things are going on in the UK. Uh, sorry, the US that's happening here in the UK. So where can people reach out to you? Yeah. So come hang out with me on Instagram. So you guys can obviously friend request me on Facebook, no problem. Um, but I hang out on Instagram. So, um, and I'll, I'll post it if it's okay with you, Alex, I'll yeah. just put it in the comments, but, um, I'm the lady sheepdog on, um, on Instagram and, uh, come hang out with me and, and private message me and just say, Hey, if you want to. And, um, just pay attention to my stories because my stories will sh they'll, they'll tell it all. Like I'll show you real life, like what it's, what it's like. And um, yeah, I, I really hope somebody somewhere might get like a good little nugget from this interview. Um, and that um, if, if there's anybody truly, like if there's anybody just feeling like they're not good enough or that they don't have like the knowledge, I just really want to give you a virtual kick in the ass and tell you, you are a fucking sheepdog dude. Like you have <laughs> so much to offer. You're, you know, more than firearms and more than, you know, all that. Like you have people skills, you have interview skills, you know, you have integrity, like you, you know, you have perseverance, right? Like you have discipline, you have, you have everything you need to be fucking amazing you just need to put yourself out there and the only thing left that and that i won't keep going but like here's something because alex you said something a few minutes ago and like a lot of them a lot of cops are kind of afraid that, or nervous to put themselves out there here's the beautiful thing about instagram you guys here's the beautiful thing about business is there are so many profiles that we don't even know who the fuck the owner is you can go create this brand and you can create um, you know, a, a brand name that nobody, it doesn't have to be like Alex, like, well, you see Alex and I, but like Alex has a company, you know, shifts to success. Like if he didn't want to be the face of it, he wouldn't have to. Right. And like, you can do the exact same thing. So don't let that stop you from like trying to grow online and grow on social media. And like, that's not gonna, it won't be hard. It, it's actually, I think it could be even easier because then people are going to buy into whatever your company's name is versus buying into you as a person. So just, just something for you to think about, cause I'm not going to let you use that as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great tip. I completely agree. That's a really good tip actually. Yeah. So awesome. No, thank sure. you so much for your time. It's thank about you. an hour of your time today. What time is it there by the way? It, uh, I don't know. I think it might be like 11 or uh, yeah, about 11 AM in the morning. Okay. <laughs> And well, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm sure people ask questions as they rewatch it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, if there's anything I can do, you know, please reach yeah. out to the group. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. This has been so much fun. And if anybody has any questions, comment below. Like, don't be afraid to reach out. I'm, I'm ask Alex. I'm this, I'm this fucking person who's feisty and who's going to swear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm this person right here. Um, as I am when you DM me, when you get on phone me, anything like that. So as you get to know me, just, I just don't, if, if somebody has a question or if somebody can just be like, Autumn, like, holy fuck, like you cried in your cruiser. I cried in my cruiser. Like even just like, that's cool. Just let me know because you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And I refuse, like, I am so big on, I don't want anybody else to become a statistic. Right. Yeah. So, um, I'm really big on that. So um, thanks, Adam, for being here. Lee, I know you were here live. I'm sure there was a couple of other people. But again, any questions? I'm going to post that link for yeah. sheep dogs, Alex, because yeah. I want people to understand yes. that I'm not just this crazy lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, absolutely. Thank you so much. You've been so bloody inspiring. So, so yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Well, I love being here. So thank you so much. All right. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.